Yes, Gawa. <laughs> Hello everyone. Welcome to this Yaskawa Technical Training Services video. In this video I'm going to be talking about the Energy Savings Predictor, or ESP for short. I'm going to show you how to find, download, and start the software. Then we're going to create a project and work step by step through the process to create an estimation for your application. Then finally, I'll show you how to create a report that you can give to your customers. Okay, let's go ahead and start. All you have to do is go to yaskawa.com. Under the Products tab, just look for HVAC Drives and Software Tools. Then just look for the Energy Savings Predictor and go ahead and just download the software. Open the zip file and just run the Setup EXE. It is recommended to extract the Setup EXE first. Okay, go ahead and click Next. Then accept the terms. Make sure Run Energy Savings Predictor is selected and go ahead and finish. Now the tools opening. One thing before we begin, I would just like to note that this is an estimation and actual energy savings can vary from this estimation. So let's go ahead and start a project. First we just need to define our application. You can either have a single HVAC system or a multiple HVAC system. When choosing a single HVAC system you have the options of using a fan, pump, or cooling tower fan. So we're going to talk about the multiple HVAC system a little later in this ELM. Okay, we're going to go ahead and select a single fan HVAC system. Okay, there are five major steps involved with this predictor. Customer information, utility information, define a system, estimated energy savings, and then the estimation report. Go ahead and just start your project. You're going to want to fill out customer information because this is going to be displayed in your report. There's additional information under Edit Contact Information. This is where you can add your company's info or even a custom logo. Under the Carbon Footprint tab, you have the ability to calculate CO2 emissions and relevant energy savings after our drive system. This can be adjusted based on where your electricity is being produced from and how many pounds of CO2 will be produced per kilowatt hour. Under Preferences, you can adjust your power units, measurements, and even your currency. Now we can just select OK and then Continue. This next step allows you to specify rates from your customer's utility company. First we'll start by entering our base rate and then enter an alternate rate if the customers charge different rates during certain times of the day or year. In some cases you can have a demand charge. This is an average of the maximum power drawn over your billing period. This can be measured in kilowatt or kilovolt amp. If no demand charge is present, this can be set to zero. These are just default values set by the system you can contact your local utility and you can see what your base rate is if you have an alternate rate or demand charge. This is a map of the average commercial price of electricity in 2014. As you can see, if you live in Hawaii, your electricity could be up around 35 cents, whereas some parts of the U.S. could be as low as 5 cents. Utility information and system information are two of the most important steps in this predictor. Just start by naming the system and since we chose a fan before we just need to select our flow control. That can be an inlet guide vane, a bypass damper, or an outlet damper. The inlet guide vanes tend to be more efficient than the output damper. Note that once the new system is installed this can either be locked open or removed because now the VFD will be able to vary the flow. 
Next, we'll just need to input some motor data. For our example, we're going to be using a 40 horsepower motor and then at a voltage of 480. You can adjust your full load amps and efficiency if need be for your application. The software has chosen an appropriate drive system for our application, but this can be adjusted manually if the user chooses. The user can choose between the Z1000 and the Z1000U matrix drive and option the system for a bypass if it calls for it. You can add install costs to give you an even more accurate payback period. Let's move on to the duty cycle. Here you can adjust where the system will be running. For a given flow, adjust the time that the system will spin there. Make sure the system adds up to 100%. If it's over or under, the percent will be highlighted in red, letting you know that you need to adjust the system. You can also select an alternate rate for a given flow. This will use the alternate rate talked about in the previous step. We can also view various graphs from the system. As you can see, we have duty cycle, payback, power required, energy usage, energy savings, and CO2 emissions. After setting your duty cycle, you'll need to set your hours of operation. This can be set in hours per day, days per week, and weeks per year, or just a cumulative hours per year. Finally, if you're eligible for any rebates, you can enter them by dollars per horsepower or dollars per system. And then we can move to the next step. Step 4 shows us our estimated energy savings. As you could see, our simple payback period came out to be 0.298 years. Remember the system was running 24-7. You can see our energy usage before and after installing our drive system. As you can see, we had a huge energy savings. Next, we can look at our carbon footprint. We saved 39 tons of CO2. You're able to go back and edit or view the system that you've made in the previous step, as well as view our system calculation. From here, you can see our payback analysis, and we are viewing over five-year period. From here, we can go ahead and view those relevant graphs that we looked at before. For our final step, we just need to create a report. You can adjust the report layout to fit your needs. Then choose to view, print, export, or email the report. You can even save your project in case you need to make changes down the road. Now it's time to test what you've learned. Let's try to create our own project. Please pause this ELM and create your own report using these new characteristics. We will see if we have the same outcome. Okay, if your report looks like mine, then I think we have this in the bag. Let's review our energy estimation. Our energy saved came out to be 40,331 kilowatt hours, while our CO2 savings came out to be 11.31 tons. Our yearly energy savings came out to be $14,116, giving us a payback estimation of 0.457 years. Before ending this ELM, I'm going to go over a multiple HVAC system. Just go ahead and select the multiple system, start the project. I'm going to skip through these first steps just because we've already went through them. Now step three is going to be a little bit different. As you can see we have a project overview. We just need to go ahead and add a system. So we're just going to give this a name. We're going to set it as a fan. Just going to add another system. Pump. Just adjusting the name. Since we haven't talked about a pump yet, the flow control available includes a bypass valve or a discharge valve. Also you can enter the minimum head for that system. Let's go ahead and add a cooling tower. 
just going to adjust the name real quick. Obviously, if you're creating your own multiple system, then you're going to be adding your motor data and your duty cycle for each system. Okay, for this multiple system, we've selected a fan, a pump, and a cooling tower system. Now for our energy estimation, we can choose between our defined systems. So I can look at my fan, pump, or tower. You can go back and edit your system if need be to make any necessary changes. And also view our system calculation for each system. So this one shows our fan system with our bypass damper. And then look at our simple payback for the system as a whole. As you can see with our simple payback, our zero crossing point indicates our break even point. This happens at 1.356 years. And then we can just view our report. As you can see, all three of our systems are in this report and they're broken up as shown. Thank you and I hope you enjoyed this ELM. There's a certification test that you can take if you want to show us what you've learned.